Good morning guys, Tony Maritato here. Welcome to the Total Knee Replacement Support Group YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna answer some questions about the rolling pin, why we use the rolling pin, how the rolling pin works, and essentially what I believe the rolling pin is actually doing to help reduce pain, improve healing, and improve circulation. So the rolling pin literally, like probably 15 years ago, the rolling pin completely changed the way I help patients after a total knee replacement. It's affordable, it's lightweight, it's easy to use, and it does essentially what I was doing in the clinic with my hands, but it does it at home at your convenience. So let's talk about it. After your initial knee replacement, right? Let's say you had surgery a day post-op, maybe, maybe even less, maybe even eight hours post-op. The knee is certainly going through the trauma of surgery. It's, it's got an inflammatory response that's initiating. The tissue is starting to heal. You probably still have some numbness and anesthesia going on. Uh, depending on the kind of surgery you had, depending on the surgeon, there might have been a tourniquet to reduce blood loss, which is great, but as a result, there's a lot of tissue damage up around the thigh region. Many patients come in complaining of more pain in the thigh and the calf than they do actually in the knee. So what I love about the rolling pin is most of us have one sitting at home somewhere. It hasn't been used for 20 years. It could be wood, it could be metal, it could be marble, whatever you've got. But the idea is this gives us a nice broad surface, flat, clean, that we can start to get facilitation of what I call fluid exchange, right? So <clears throat> we're not moving as much as we normally would after surgery. So your muscles, I always say this in the clinic, your muscles don't know the difference between massage and exercise, other than massage will not make your muscles stronger, but massage will help the fluid exchange. It'll facilitate that kind of getting rid of the waste products, the lymphatic system. It'll move that back into the system to allow the kidneys and everything to process that fluid. It'll help facilitate the exchange of nutrients, bring nutrients back into the tissue. It'll move the fibers. Normally when you're walking and standing and getting around, those fibers, those muscles are moving back and forth. Right now you're not, so the mechanical pressure of the massage is gonna help get those fibers moving. It's gonna stretch the connective tissue, and most importantly, it's gonna desensitize some of those sensitive areas. If I bump my elbow in the middle of the night, ah, the first thing I do is I rub it. Because that rubbing provides other information for the nerve endings to pick up. And so the rolling pin does the same thing. I've got sensitive areas in, in my thigh, my calf. I massage them gently. My brain feels the sensation of massage. And it feels good. It's relaxing. It's soothing. I feel like I'm doing something not to mention it puts some control in your hands. There's nothing worse than feeling out of control, knowing that there's nothing you can possibly do. This gives you something to do that absolutely creates some benefit. So let's talk about how you do it. Let's jump into the meat of it. Usually what I do is I say, look, if this is my couch, right? There's an armrest there, there's an armrest at the other end, the back of the couch is behind me. I just have a patient sit comfortably in the couch. If this is my surgical leg, we get the rolling pin. And initially, within the first couple weeks, I want to apply pressure up into the system. After the first couple weeks, I can press up and down and it doesn't really matter too much. But initially, first couple weeks post-op, I want to start the rolling pin low and I want to pull up into the thigh. And then I lift, I pull, I'm getting the inside, I'm getting the top, I'm getting the outside. If you have staples to close your, your incision, don't roll over the staples. It's just not something you have to do. Um, if you have a glued incision or anything else and you feel comfortable getting a little pressure on the incision, it's fine. Again, you're in control of how much pressure. It should not be painful, should not be miserable. You should feel kind of like a good, pleasurable sensation because you're getting the fluid back into the system. I will usually recommend for my clients, you do this one episode every one to two hours while you're at home. 
Um, you do about one to two minutes on the upper thigh, and then if you don't have shoulder or back problems, go ahead, bend over, and get the lower leg. And again, I start with the upper thigh, pulling back into the system, then I go into the lower leg, pulling up toward the knee, because I wanna get that fluid out of the foot, out of the ankle, uh, back into the system so my kidneys and liver and everything else can do the job. Uh, if I'm doing one or two minutes on the upper thigh, I'll do one or two minutes on the lower calf. I also encourage all of my clients to do exactly the same thing on the other leg. The reality is if I did a left knee replacement, my right leg is gonna be carrying the load for the next couple days to a week to several weeks. I need to keep my, my non-surgical knee as healthy as possible, and this does a great job. And so guys, uh, somebody in the knee group asked what the rolling pin's for, why we use it, what we do. That's essentially the summary. Of course, there's lots of other tools and devices you guys can get into and play with. Talk to your physical therapist, talk to your surgical team. The pain that you experience after surgery is absolutely intense. There's no doubt about it, but there should be a sequential improvement in the pain. Most of my clients will relay to me, the first 24 hours, they probably still have anesthesia and benefits from the post-surgical medication. Then they go through uh, an increase in pain, but then that normalizes and de decreases. By the first three to, three to five days, there's a marked improvement. Pain is getting better and it continues to improve as time goes out. If you're experiencing more pain over the first three to five days, if you're experiencing more redness, more swelling, more heat, if something just doesn't feel right, you're the best judge of that, reach out to your medical team. We always wanna check for an infection. We always wanna check for a possible blood clot. Those are big factors that may slow down the healing and recovery, so don't hesitate get on the phone, get a hold of somebody, and have them examine what's going on. Otherwise, guys, as always, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate the views. I love the comments. I read every single comment. Even if I don't get back to you within a day or two, please feel free to leave your comments on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share your questions. Your questions help me produce better videos. I'll see you on the next one.